Welcome back to the Tool Crib. Today we're going to be looking at the Storage Master 89D. This is the box that I use on the job site. It's, uh, and uh, you know, I've had several different versions of these, but the 89D with the junk drawers on the bottom is a very advantageous box to have. So this one gets stored in the very front of the trailer when we're in transit. And a little while later, I'll show you how all that gets rigged in so that, uh, you know, it's not moving all over the place. So at the moment, what we're doing is we are unloading everything, all the major components off the trailer. Uh, over the course of months, different job sites, you just accumulate all kinds of extra weight, whether that be from extra hardware or paint or silicones or uh, welding rod, uh, just to any number of different things that add to the weight of the trailer. And so we're going through it and kind of leaning the trailer up, if you will, to bring the weight down a, a little bit. So we're unloading this with, normally we would do this with by forklift, but uh, because we're at home, we don't have access to a forklift right now. So we're using a set of ramps that stay on the trailer that allow us to offload everything. Uh, I actually made these ramps about three trailers ago out of some 10 inch purlin and uh, some, some pipe and they have worked very, very well for me. In fact, even today, I've even got my little helpers helping out. Now, as I mentioned before, the Storage Master D, the 89D, or those junk drawers are really, really advantageous to have. Normally what we do is they stay empty and then on the job site when we're picking up either, either for lunch or for the end of the day, we'll throw all of our cordless or corded tools down there. And so it's it's very, they're not getting uh, piled up with the rest of the tools in the box itself. So it's very advantageous for me to have these, uh, the lower junk drawers. Now, I actually set my boxes up a little bit different. I add a bunch of different components into them. Uh, the first thing that I added in was a wrench rack that sits on one side. Now, these are all kind of oddball wrenches. Well, not oddball. I mean, they're all sized correctly, but they're from different sets that have been uh, accumulated over the years. I mean, you guys know how it goes. You always lose in a set, uh, a wrench out of sets all the time. And so these are just mix and matched. Uh, but we set up a rack so that we can carry various different wrenches and these actually sit outside of the box and they don't get uh, locked in per se but because they're all mix and match sets i've really never had a problem losing wrenches uh, on the job site anybody ever messing with them so when we're in transit uh, this we have a little bungee that wraps around those wrenches to keep them from just flying off of, of those uh, of the rack that we built for it so it's actually worked out pretty well. Now, the next thing I did is I added in a lower a lower shelf. Uh, basically, we just use one inch flat bar, built, uh, bent it out, uh, two matching ones, one high, one low, and then I put an expanded metal bottom on it to house stuff like WD-40s or spray paint cans uh, on the job. And having that expanded metal bottom will keep your shelf from building up with dust and debris that you're always gonna encounter on a job site. The next thing that I did was added in a, uh, a hammer rack. And to do this, I, I used a quarter by four flat bar. We extended it out from the box and then we used quarter by one flat bar that uh, it's spaced apart, basically the, the width of your, of your largest hammer size and welded them in place. And then all the hammers can just have a place to sit down on. This is another thing that doesn't get locked in, but it's never been a problem of uh, people taking uh, hammers either so I used to I've done this with all the boxes I've had before uh, when I upgraded about three years ago to this box I added in some extra uh, flat bar on the back uh, where it gets welded or stitched into the uh, into the the uh, jaw box itself because over time uh, and over the course of several years if you don't do that what will happen is uh, with hammers getting thrown in there all the time it'll eventually start to kind of tear at the sheet metal of the box itself and so by adding that that backer plate to it uh, it it's just been phenomenally good it hasn't there's not even a sign of any stress on the sheet metal of the box so it, it's worked out really well now one thing that we definitely use a lot is vice clamps uh, we use these things all the time in fact i have 30 on the box 
So we set these up uh, so that they can hang freely and they're just not, you know, they're not uh, being thrown on the shelves or in the bottom of the box and they're all very easy to get to. Also very easy to count. Uh, whenever you're picking tools up, either at the end of the day or end of a job, you know if you're missing anything very quickly. So the way we accomplished this was I actually welded in a piece to the front side. We put a bar across there. I think we used half inch uh, bar that went across there. And then we put a weld plate on the back that actually gets bolted to the existing holes that are on the shelf. Uh, and that that kicks the, all those those uh, brackets or excuse me all of those clamps out so that they're not rubbing against the side of the box and so they're really just kind of hanging in there freely and it has worked very very well now the next thing that i added in is actually probably one of the best things that i put on this box and that is a uh, two separate racks for impact sockets uh, we go through or we use impact sockets on a daily basis and in fact, I have multiple sets of, of impact sockets. These were kind of mix and match sets, much like those wrenches. Over time, you have so many different sets, your pieces get lost and stolen, whatever. And so these are all mix and match, but we painted one set orange, the other set yellow. And then to build this rack, it was two by two quarter angle. And we put all the pins in there. We drilled each uh, quarter inch holes, and then we put quarter inch bar through there. And welded them in place. Now on the back side, what, what, what I did is I added on uh, some quarter inch strips. Uh, I think these were quarter by one and then we tapped and threaded them so that they would accept the hole pattern or the holes that are on that shelf much like we did uh, for the rack for those, for those clamps. And this is one of the biggest time savers I ever built. These two racks uh, at a moment's notice or at a glance, you know if there's any sockets missing and that and that is very, very advantageous. It's, it's, it's a huge time saver on the job. One of the, one of the biggest things I like about these boxes uh, is the fact that they're all key like though. Uh, having the ability to have the upper and lower boxes or the lower drawers all the same key, as well as um, the keys that I have for some of my other boxes. I, I bought all the same uh, key to like locks for them. And so it's one key to open and close, uh, to open up everything and that that is huge in it, in and of itself. So those bottom drawers, like I said, we're kind of uh, going through stuff right now. Uh, normally, these will be empty during transit with the exception of, uh, you know, the... Uh, I got a couple cordless tools that I keep in there, sheet metal, uh, shears, and stuff of that nature. Uh, but normally, I'll just have the impact driver uh, bits that'll store in there. And then they stay empty in transit, and they get filled up in... Uh, with uh, our cordless tools during the course of the job day or at the end of the day uh, and then at the end of the job we'll store them back in the trailer where they go so having those junk drawers is a really really nice thing now the way that I locked this in is I used uh, e-track at the very front so I had to I, I, I cut a piece that went across the width of the, of the of the front of the trailer and then we drilled and we bolted through uh, to the outside and then we used uh, fender washers on the outside and we set that at the level so that the strap that holds in the box it's it's right underneath the lid or right right where the lock would pass and so that way the strap is not getting cut on uh, on you know that thinner sheet metal of the lid so this has worked out really really well and this is what I've done with every one of my boxes and this is, we, we set that box in there first. I started with the toolboxes that I was gonna use, and then we worked the, the rest of the build of the trailer around those. When all is said and done, this thing rides perfect. Uh, it's easy to get out. You know, you have to, when we get to the job site, we're unloading the welders first and the two toolboxes, as well as all the ladders. And then we have the trailer completely free uh, to be able to work out of. It's just the type of work we do. We're on long-term jobs. And so this is the method that really works best for us. This has been a look at the Kanak 89D, uh, the Storage Master 89D. It's one of the boxes that I really, really love. Uh, the other one is a mechanics box that we're going to get to later. And that is a very nice box as well. You've been watching the Texas Tool Crib. I appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next one.